Let's see what these things can do. Yeah! I can fix this. Oh. Uh. Whoa. Huh? Ah! Uh, uh, whoa. I think these chairs need a <gasps> giant snowball. A giant snowball? Giant snowball headed straight for us. Uh. Hang on, Polos. Whoa, what was that? It was huge. Let's find out. Whoa. We're gaining on it! Woohoo! You know, I think that giant snowball is a comet. Comets are just big balls of ice and dust and rock until they get near the sun. Look! It's changing! Is it melting? It looks like the heat of the sun is setting it on fire. Because the sun's energy heats the comet's ice and gases, it's growing a long tail. Whoa! Whoa! It's the rocks and ice from the comet's tail. Ah! Willow, what do I do? Ah! You've got this, Lily. Remember the button I told you not to touch? Well, punch it. Gorby, the same green stuff that comes out of your nose. Whale boogers? Ew. Uh-oh. Whales don't need to surface for long to breathe. They shut their blowhole and then dive back underwater. Inside, everybody. Whoa. Humpback whales are humongous. so the whale can be heard by other whales from far away. <sighs> I really hope it'll sing with us. Let's find out. Hello, we are the Polos. And we'd be honored if we could record you singing with us. <gasps> you and your baby, how cute.
sound through waves Using music to communicate Vocal tricks make a melody It sounds just like a song to me The song could be a warning or a friendly hello High like a chirp or way down low It's a language only whales can speak Sounds like a song to me like a kind of beetle. What would such a little thing want with such a big ball of poop? You don't think it's gonna eat it? Ew! Ew. Uh, let's look it up. It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes. They also get water from the dung. Okay. This time I'm going to say it. Eee yuck. Where's it going? Yeah. If they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty. They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savannah by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs in dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle. Dung beetle. They've got a dirty job that someone's gotta do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poo, would you? Polo Marine Mode. And down we go! Hey, it says here that the ocean has different zones that get different amounts of sunlight. Right now, we're in the topmost zone, called the sunlit zone. Plenty of sunlight can reach this area, but the deeper we go down, the darker it gets. Below the sunlit zone is the twilight zone. Here, a little sunlight can reach. And below that, deep, deep down, is a midnight zone. Light can't reach here at all, so it's completely dark. Wow! It's getting really dark. And we're here. Uh, it's kind of spooky. I'll turn the headlights on. Whoa! What is that? A rat tail fish. It's named that because of its really long tail fin. In the deep ocean, only plants and animals that can survive extreme pressure live here. And most of them look very unusual. Ooh, like that creature. Yes, that's a type of sea slug called a nudibranch. It's cool, but I don't see Nash's dolphin. What's that thing? What is it? Wow! Jellyfish! <gasps> and they're glowing! 
When a creature can make its own light, it's called bioluminescence. It's very useful when there's no sunlight around. Lucky! Dolphin! <gasps> Nash, you found it! The glow from the jellyfish helped you see where your toy landed. Oh, yeah! Way to go, Nash! All right! Got it! Nice! nice. Good work, Willow! Willow. Here you go, Nash. Good as new. Ah. Wait! Hey. Just a little soggy still. <laughs> cool! Yeah! yeah. Dolphin! Yay! <gasps> Uh-oh! <laughs> that piece of wood is full of grooves. Do you think those insects made them? Like, maybe they ate the wood? Let's find out what they are. They're termites. Too bad termites can't talk. They would have been close enough to see what happened to the picnic log. I don't think so. Most termites can't see. Actually, I think we're just seeing a few termites. Look, termites live in colonies. There can be more than a million termites in a colony. A million? That's a lot. Around here, the colonies are underground. But in other places, they build these. They are huge! The mounds are their nests. And at the center is the termite queen. It's her job to make sure that there are more and more termites. She is one big termite. It says that termite queens can grow to be as big as your thumb. She gets so big, she can't move around. So all of her children take care of her. So what do termites eat? Wood, right? It says here that most termites like to eat rotting wood from falling trees. That's one of the ways decomposition happens. Decomposition? What's that? That's when old rotting plants break down and return their nutrients back to the earth. So that new plants can grow. Hmm. I know what made the picnic log disappear. You figured it out? You know where the picnic log went? Yes. The amazing Lily will now amaze you by explaining the disappearing picnic log. Yay, amazing Lily! The picnic log was a fallen tree. Right. I just never thought of it that way. And fallen trees are the kind of rotting wood that termites like to eat. The termites made the picnic log disappear. They ate it. That's decomposition. Exactly. Now the only thing that's left of our whole picnic log is that one little piece of wood. And the termites are eating that too. That is yes. amazing. Thank you, thank you. So the disappearing picnic log isn't a magic trick after all. No, it's part of how nature works. I miss the picnic log, but I still like it here. It's nice to think that it's feeding other plants and animals so that they can live and grow. And speaking of feeding, picnic! And now I, the amazing Lily, will perform another amazing trick. I will now make the sandwich disappear. Ha! Amazing <laughs> Lily! <laughs> That's Venus. It's so bright. Really bright. Not only is it bright, it's really hot. The hottest planet in the solar system. The air in its atmosphere traps the heat. Wonder how Jester's doing. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's keeping busy. Looky, looky, looky. Yeah, Nash, that's where we live, Earth. It's so beautiful. My personal favorite. Me too. Me three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See you soon, Earth. We're coming up on Mars, the fourth planet from the sun. Oh, it's really red. But what's that white stuff? Those are polar ice caps, just like Earth. Hey, Chester. Oh, hi. Where are you guys now? 
We're just passing Jupiter. It's so big, it's hard to miss. It's the largest planet in the solar system. Did you know that Jupiter is 1,300 times bigger than Earth? Yeah, huge. And it's mostly gas, right? And it has lots of storms, too. There's one that's been going on for over 300 years. Whoa, that's a long time for bad weather. So, Chester, we're making really good time. We'll be there soon. Okay, see you in a bit. Look, Nash, Saturn. Wings, pretty wings. Yeah, it has rings. Cool, aren't they? They're made of millions of ice crystals. Some of them are really teeny tiny, no bigger than a speck of dust. And some of them are enormous, big as a house. I'm dancing like nobody's watching, because nobody's watching. Woohoo! Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Bip, la, bop, la, boo, ooh, ooh. Passing planet number seven, Uranus. Rings, rings! Hey, it's got rings too. It's such a weird one. It spins on its side. Not too much farther to Pluto now. Chester must be ready for us to get there. Uh-huh. Yay, Neptune, the last planet in the solar system. But it doesn't have wings like a bird. They have flaps of skin under their arms that they use like a parachute. Oh, so they don't really fly. They glide, like a person on a hang glider. Cool! Whoa. Scientists think they do it to escape danger and to save the energy they would use climbing around. I don't think it likes the light. I'll turn this off. Listen. It's an owl. I really want to see an owl. Then let's head this way. Wow. I think it's a great horned owl. They're great hunters. They prey on rabbits, squirrels, and even skunks. Those are big animals for a bird that size. Is that a great horned owl too? That must be the female. It's higher. So you can tell the males from the females just by listening. Look out! Ah! Look, a different one. Cool face. Ooh. Ooh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. I'll say, I think this one is a barn owl, and it <laughs> doesn't hoot like most owls do. It shrieks. You know, I was a teeny bit nervous about being in the dark. You were? You know I was. Oh, it's okay, Willow. <laughs> but it turned out to be wonderful. Listen, you can hear the animals that are out at night. It's like a song. A night song. Have you noticed the night has a rhythm And a melody all of its own And the music that goes along with them Is the sparkle of stars in the moonlit sky Goes 